Hey everyone, I made an exciting purchase this winter. I got a 2021 Ibis Ripmo. I was able to take it out for my first ride on Mills Peak up in Grey Eagle. So stick around, keep watching, and I'll talk about my first impressions for my first ride on the 2021 Ibis Ripmo. So far, the new bike is awesome. Climbs really well. I'm very out of shape. I got bought this bike in summer or fall. Came in December. And then I immediately got COVID and haven't been able to ride it. So I am very excited. I'm not used to as the driver post lever is different than my old bike. So I'm used to that. So one thing that I've noticed about this bike is that it does way better than these snowy icy spots than my old bike did. Oh, I don't think I mentioned my old bike was a 2016 transition smuggler. So it was a short travel 29er. It's a really awesome capable bike, but I wanted something to put a little more travel. This still paddled well. All right, this is the first I've ridden this bike downhill other than betting in the brakes. Uh, I'm really excited. We rode a little over three and a quarter miles up Mills Peak. It was a little snowy at the bottom, but actually once we got out past the first mile or so, there hasn't been any snow on the trail, but the trail's in an awesome shape. And I'm excited to see what this bike can do on the downhill. So this is my fourth uh, real mountain bike. My first bike was a hardtail Cannondale with a head shock. Then I had a six inch really heavy uh, 26 GT sanction that I upgraded to my previous bike, the 2016 Smuggler Transition, which was 130 millimeters of travel in the front and 115 in the back, so pretty short travel, but it's a really capable bike, but I felt like I was getting to the point where the bike wasn't so much like holding me back. I mean, a good rider could ride that thing anywhere. I mean, I took it to Downeyville to Whistler and had a blast on it, but I felt like I wanted more travel to start getting a little more aggressive and faster. I could take my way through a lot of stuff with those big wheels and the fairly modern geometry, but I am so excited to have a little more travel and a slacker head tube angle. Uh, this is Mills Peak in Grey Eagle. It's one of the many awesome Sierra Buttes trail stewardship trails, and we actually ran into one of the staff of Sierra Buttes trail stewardship on the way up, talked to him, and they just doing some tree clearing. Looks awesome. So in addition to having not quite mastered the new dropper post lever, the uh, longer bike I'm struggling a little bit in the switchbacks, but it's not quite as bad as when I went from the sanction to the smuggler because uh, the still have the same wheel size as I did before. I am super lucky that I got this bike. I decided 
that was ready for a new bike this summer. Got a new job and we are just in time for or all the bikes have been sold out everywhere for a long time. But my local awesome bike shop, Paco's in Truckee, happened to have a 2020 Ritmo in my size. So like I was saying, Paco's bike shop in Truckee had this 2020 Ritmo frame in my size and I just had to wait for the parts kit to come in. It took a while and it's a little bit of a frame bike, but it works. It's been a while since I've been on a mountain bike between that COVID and it becoming winter here, but the Ritmo is making up for a lot of my skills that are lacking right now. It's interesting, one of the things I was nervous about and thought that I'd probably want to change right away um, to riding is the 800 millimeter bars because I went from 760 to 800, but I mean, this isn't super tight trees or anything, but actually I'm not as nervous about them as I thought I was going to be. Usually like a real chicken going through two trees, and I thought that the 800 bars would be a lot worse. Man, this bike is super fun, but also this might be the best conditions I've ever ridden the trail. The uh, bottom part would not be able to hit as hard because there's more snow and ice. Actually, the little tiny road section is like a sheet of ice, so you have to walk. <laughs> but this uh, middle part is incredible. We turn around at kind of the top of the middle section, um, both because we're out of shape and we heard that it gets it got pretty snowy after that. But um, wasn't very rideable for too much longer, so just turned around there. It's often we're usually where we turn around when we ride up to the bottom. One of the reasons I was a little hesitant about getting a longer travel bike for a long time and why I went with the shorter travel is I wanted something that climbed really well um, and having that uh, longer travel sanction it was a super fun park bike but not great at all at climbing. I wanted something that climbed really well and the smuggler did that but with the advances in suspension technology this <laughs> pedals better than the much shorter travel smuggler. a ride that I filmed on my smuggler and then do the same ride shortly after when I got my new bike but it took a little longer to get the parts kit than I was expecting by the time I got it it was snowed in so no comparison ride at least at this point maybe do one for old time's sake when I haven't sold my old bike by then Another thing I've noticed with this bike, and you know, definitely just first impressions, is that it's a lot easier to pedal standing up than my other bike. I mean, it's something I was really working on, my smuggler, but it's 
something about its uh, stability it makes it a lot better if the pedal is standing up. So now we are on the bottom part of the last like, mile -ish of the trail, which has more ice than the higher part for some reason. 